Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree garden wreath and a bonus lantern. Uh, we're going to use the hanging planter uh, from the Dollar Tree, the metal one, and we're going to use a bird feeder um, as well as a solar light. Now you can use the solar light from the Dollar Tree and I'll show you how to rig that if you want to, but I actually have a broken one. I just stick paper back in the tab. This is actually a 50 cent Christmas wreath that I got left over after Christmas. Um, the birdhouse is in the kits of, you know, toy put together stuff. And then I'm gonna use some flowers. We're gonna use some of these giant peonies um, and then some greenery. We're gonna use the ferns as well as the spider plant. Um, I found these most recently and I was very excited. I'm also going to use a couple of gladiolas. The original inspiration piece had three large flowers, but I thought that it looked better with two large flowers and some small ones. So I'm going to pilfer some of the gladiolos. And then I'm going to make a bow out of the wire edged lace burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm actually, I'll show you guys. And then of course we're going to use our glue gun and I'm going to use a couple of small pieces of jute. So this was the inspiration piece. I saw it online at kirklands.com uh, and I was like, well, heck yeah, I had this broken solar light for a long time that I've been saving because it's, um, it was, I want to say when the Dollar Tree had higher quality stuff, but when the Dollar Tree had high, higher quality stuff. Um, <laughs> but as you can see, it's bigger than the ones that they offer now, which isn't a big deal. All you need to do is to take some of the black wire from the hardware section and to drape it across, tie it across the opening, um, just enough that you can fit the, um, the solar light in there and it'll hang on there. And then you can glue it to the wire. Um, this is a hot knife. It is actually like a wood burning tool with attachments. Melody Reed had gifted it to me. Thank you, Melody. It worked wonderful. Um, it actually is like an X-Acto knife piece of blade that goes in there. It's got a special holder for it and it heats up the X-Acto knife blade. Now this is at high speed, so it did take a moment, but you just need a little bit of patience. Um, let the knife get heated up and let it work on that plastic. The neck of this, uh, uh, what is this a bird feeder is very thick plastic the rest of it's kind of thin so if you did want to go like if you felt like you had a really steady hand and you wanted to cut a little lower than the neck that would work um, if you didn't have a hot knife um, or you could just use the hacksaw from the Dollar Tree but I just wanted to show you an alternative a new tool to have to possibly use um, I just thought this was so neat and it cut it so cleanly um, but you want to be careful because I actually like it was cutting so smoothly that I actually cut in the wrong direction so pay attention um, but this is kind of hidden up anyway plus we're going to glue it I am actually going to use Gorilla glue sticks but if you want to use E6000 um, then you go right ahead but um, I know that this where this is going to be it's going to be protected the glue under the underside um, because the globe is so big because the solar light globe is so big it you, you know the glue is never going to hit any sun or anything so I'm not really worried about that but I wanted to show you that I actually had this for a couple of years actually since we bought the house um, and I, I basically stuck a piece of paper um, in the battery connection just to save it for a project like this um, and all I did was hot glue there as you can see, I started to hot glue the bird feeder to the thing without actually putting the cage in first, which was silly. Make sure you put the cage in first. And then I glued around all the five, the six points of the cage, or nine points, I think there are, um, of the cage, just to give it a little added extra security, and then let it cool off before I turned it over. Because actually, first time I turned it over, and it just was like, bloop. Uh, yeah, Jerry, you didn't wait for the glue to harden. <laughs> So then we're going to connect the chain. Um, the, the chain on the inspiration piece was connected all the way by the solar light, which was perfect. Um, I just took the three points that actually originally held the chain and I hooked them to them. The thing is, it's hung crooked because I'm short and Jim's not here. <laughs> So, oh yeah, um, so I wanted it to be here to light up my flag because I like to keep, keep my flag out at night and I wanted a little light for that area and I really thought it came out cute and that was just a quick one I wanted to show you but here's the inspiration piece for the wreath that we're going to make. Now their bird, Kate, their birdhouse is all kinds of antiqued and 
it's on the other side of the bow. I just made my version of it. That's all. You guys make your version of it too. Um, and as you can see, it was originally a $40 wreath. And I was like, we could probably make that for less than $10. <laughs> so this bird uh, house comes with white glue, but I wanted to go ahead and just put it together quickly with my hot glue. Um, again, this is Gorilla Hot Glue in this because I want, this is hanging outside and I really wanted it to be sturdy. So, um, I'm just putting it together. It's very simple instructions. They actually have printed instructions on the back, but it's, it's very simple. I don't think, I think you guys can see me do it. You'd probably be fine, but you could whitewash this, paint this. I mean, I, my intention was that I'm hoping birds will actually live in it. And I know that that sounds like silly, but really, you know, because it's from the Dollar Tree, but really that was my intention. Um, I wanted to make sure that the perch was glued in really well and that the hole was uh, nice and smooth. I ran my finger through the hole and made sure that it was nice and smooth. Um, and then I laid some of the Spanish moss um, on my porch uh, at Easter time and Jimmy said they had taken all of it to use it for nesting. So I was like, hey, let me go ahead and make this little birdhouse and hang this under the carport so they can go ahead and have a nice little place to live. I don't know if anybody will, but it's there. <laughs> so once we put all of the birdhouse together, like I said, it's really cute. You could decorate this more. You could put, make like popsicle shingles would be cute. Um, it's just something we did back in the day. Oh, maybe that'd be a good throwback Thursday. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Um, yeah, so set it off to the side um, and again, embellish it, do as you want if you want to stain it or paint it or whatever. So I actually picked up two or three, three or four of these wreaths for 50 cents each after um, Christmas. And I want to show you that a pine wreath can be all year because, you know, it's a conifer, it's a evergreen and it's just as green in the summertime as it is in the winter time. So there is no rule that says that a pine wreath or this wreath has to be just for Christmas. Sorry, it just doesn't. Um, but I thought it would make a great base so I wouldn't have to use as many greens. Plus it was 50 cents and it was 18 inches and I was like, heck yeah. Um, so I pulled off, I used two whole fern bushes and one of the spider plant. Um, and what I decided to do was to, um, I really, really like these ferns, guys, because they look so realistic with the, uh, they have a variegated colors. Like you get two set, two kinds of each leaf. It's like one that's really thick and older looking, one that's sort of new and dark. And then there's one that's new and light. And then there's like the plastic inner one that um, really looks like brand new growth. It just was really pretty. So I just separated them and I um, just basically laid them on the same direction I laid the pine um, in a circular motion. You don't have to do that. You can haphazardly put them in either direction if you want to. I just always like to form my wreaths like that. Um, and then I alternated. I alternated a dark one, a new one, an old one like that. Okay. I just cut off the little ends so they wouldn't be seen and I stuck them overlapping each leaf as it went. Now I did the same thing with the spider plant. I pulled all of the individual leaves off and I um, either cut the end off or I just glued the end and tucked it under the ferns and I went all the way around with them. And I went, um, so far the ferns and the leaves that I used from the spider plant all laid on towards the outside of the wreath, the middle and the outside of the wreath. I wanted to go ahead and add some in the inside. So what I did was I took the spider plant has like these new growth little three little bursts on them and I cut them apart and I laid them on the inside of the wreath. I knew I had an idea where I wanted to put my bow so I didn't bother putting one there um, but I just put them in like three of the four corners. I know that sounds weird but um, and then I did the same thing with the leftover uh, spider leaves. Um, I basically cut them down in half um, and some, and the leftover ferns, whichever ferns I didn't use, I cut them down and just basically glued them on the inside just to make it seem like it was a much fuller arrangement. Now we're going to go ahead and add the giant peonies. These are gorgeous. 
these were gorgeous i'm so happy that i found them i got three and i was originally going to use three i also pulled off their leaves their leaves are a beautiful quality as well um, but the inspiration piece had these giant oversized flowers which i thought was just like perfect they were pink but i like white anyway it kind of goes more with my aesthetic so I was originally going to use three, but then I ended up realizing that just two was enough. And then that's what made me inspired to add the gladiolas because though, um, you know, it was sort of an asymmetrical look on the wreath and I wanted to keep that going. All right, so I ended up putting the two giant uh, peonies down um, and I showed you there real quick that how it would look with the three, but um, what I opted to do then was to, um, like I said, I the, the gladiola has different sizes and I actually ended up using two of like the medium ones. And then I glued the um, the leaves down for the peony as well. I kind of tucked them underneath just to add another layer of green. Now this is a different bow than we've ever made before so I figured I would walk you through it. Um, what basically I have here is this lace ribbon and we did a DIY a few weeks ago with books where I have this ribbon that I ripped the lace off of. So we're gonna end up using that as well. And what I did basically is I just took it and I looped it around twice. I made two loops of no lace and two loops of lace, uh, roughly at the same size. I have them about eight inches from, tip to, from corner to corner of the loops. Okay, and then I layered them on top of each other, folded it in half, and right at the half point, I cut a notch in. I cut a notch in on both sides. Then I took the last piece of lace ribbon and I tied that in the middle, just basically how we've always done it before. Um, and then I just fluffed it out. The good thing about cutting the notches is that these, these, this ribbon is so thick that the notch actually helps the loops move around a little bit easier, okay? I added a little piece of burlap to it, tied a little piece of burlap, I mean not burlap, jute on there so that I can tie it onto the wreath. And then I'm gluing two pieces of jute to the back of the birdhouse. Now the one thing I will tell you I did different on the birdhouse and I didn't mention was I didn't center the roof. I knew that I wanted to put the back of this uh, up against the wreath so I kept the back flush. Okay, and then I tied the bow on and I thought that it would look nice with the birdhouse right there by the bow. Um, but again, the inspiration piece had it on the other side and if that's the way you wanna do it, go for it. I think either way would look cute. Um, I just figured this way I wouldn't have to add any more flowers to it um, because the inspiration piece, the f they kind of put flowers around the birdhouse as well. But I just thought this looks so pretty, like a clean, modern farmhouse, just like I like. Um, you know, but still romantic and lovely. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, but I went ahead and dog eared my, or dovetailed, excuse me, the ends of my ribbon. And like I said, fluff, fluff, fluff away. Um, but what I decided to do last minute, and I didn't actually glue this in, but I wanted to show you how it looks, is I took some of this gypsum. It sort of looks supposed to look like baby's breath, but it's basically styrofoam pom-poms. And I stuck a little bit under each of the peonies. And then I put a hanger on the back, one of my famous loop hangers. And instead of gluing it, I actually twisted a piece of the pine garland, a pine wreath around the loop. And that's it. Then I hung it. So that's everything. I think this one is absolutely lovely. I mean, I just do. It's like romantic and lovely, shabby chic and French country at the same time. So hopefully you really enjoyed these tutorials. If you do, please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in learning how to make this or any of these techniques. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe and when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye!